pushed him up the ranking. So yeah. by buying 400, he spent, this is Mark Dawson, his name, he spent 3,600 on copies of his own book for a children's bookshop in Salisbury. Uh, uh, it was in 13th spot in the midweek sales chart, and he rose up the rankings and got to number eight just they by buying his own book. They've pulled him, haven't they? They've pulled him off the rankings. Well, who would have thought it would just a I small think they thing have. I think they have. I think they've pulled him off the rankings. Um, said we've got Oliver Stone on the programme, the Oscar-winning filmmaker, of course, known for some of Hollywood's biggest films from the last 50 years. Think Midnight Express, Platoon, Nixon. Yeah, I mean, his, he has had an extraordinary mm. life, and he's got a book out charting uh, some of the early years, both in the military, because he was a, a Vietnam veteran yeah. and awarded uh, for his work there, but also went on to direct some very, very controversial movies. Of course, he too has been caught up in lockdown. Let's have to see what he said. We live in extraordinary times at the moment, and you're, I'm speaking to you in L.A., and I just wonder, how how is lockdown... Well, Charlie, I can't complain. I'm internally directed. I'm a writer. Spend a lot of time inside my mind, so it's not been as bad for me as people who are who, who's employed on the outside. I'm curious about you, being someone who's in the film business, about how you see that here on in. One is the practical side of filmmaking and how how that's done, but then the other thing, literally, who's going to sit in the cinema? No, oh, yeah, it's devastating. I mean. Honestly, I'm kind of semi-retired from movies. I haven't made a movie since Snowden in 2016. It's terrible for the business, and it's going to put a big hole in everything. It's changing everything. I don't know what exactly is going to happen on the other side. I think there's a lot of anger and a lot of, you know, calls for change. I know you love going to the cinema. You love going to see a film. No, I do. I mean, so can you see a time when we, we do that again, when we go back to the cinema, you know, other people sitting around us and... I would, I'd love it. I love the feeling of sitting in the theatre and seeing it with an audience and feeling it's working. It's a wonderful feeling. It can't be talked. I mean, I have a big screen at home, so I'm lucky and I can bring down the screen. I have a movie effect at home, but I, at the end of the day, a few people watch it. It's not the same thing. Is the war worth a one-term presidency? Because right now, I think that's what we're looking at. So. I will not go down as the first American president to lose a war. I want to talk about uh, your book, and I, I noticed that I've seen uh, Sir Anthony Hopkins, who, of course, is, is one of our own here in the UK, and, of course, was Nixon in, in your film. We played Nixon so amazingly. He wrote that uh, about you. He said, you're someone who rattles cages. He has no respect for safe places, and that you're larger than life. I, I was wondering... When did that, was the little boy, Oliver Stone, that same person who would uh, ask questions and maybe uh, get under people's skin a bit? Were you the same person then when you were little as, as possibly, I don't know whether you think it's fair. Well, that, gets, that, go, that goes to the, the crux of the book. It's how you get to be who you are, how you develop as an artist, filmmaker. It starts in 1976 in New York. I was broke, I was depressed, uh, going nowhere with my screenwriting, giving up almost, and... At the age of 30 in New York, my life changed because I started to think differently. And going to Vietnam when I was younger, as a soldier, and first of all, as a, as a sailor, as a teacher, and then as a soldier, coming back to America, not fitting in, all this has been makes for life. And I try to deal with the, uh, the risk factor. It's always taking big risks. This book is a lot about failure and a lot about doubt, betrayal, many betrayals. So a lot of crooks, and uh, I think you see a few of them in the book. A lot of people, I think, when, when they think of you, they think of you, Platoon. If you're going to get killed tonight, it's better to get it. They all think of Platoon, which is a, a, an extraordinary film that you made. And it, what, what, clearly what was a very interesting time in your life, combat, you say, as a searing experience. Yes, yes. It, it gives you, it gives you a, besides the fact it teaches you a lot about the horrors of life and how low it can get and how beastly and violent, you know. It, it teaches you grit, it teaches you, you resilience and how to survive. And I used those qualities later in my life when I got rejected so many times on screenplays, you know, to keep going, to keep fighting. We are watching uh, uh, the Trump administration at the moment, uh, which is possibly an administration like none other before. Uh, would, would Oliver Stone be drawn back to... to to do something uh, on Trump? I mean, Trump is so dramatic, so outrageous a character. He's larger than any movie. 
if you made a movie, he would be changing. By the time the movie came out, he would be another character again. I mean, the, every day in his life is, we've never had a president like this and a story like this. So it's impossible to chart this because it's closer to reality TV than it is to, to a movie with a narrative. Do you watch silly films? Do you consume, I don't know, I was thinking to myself, what can I ask Oliver Stone? Has, have you seen, for example, have you watched, I don't know, we watched Toy Story. Uh, I saw it, I, but I wasn't, yes, I mean, I, 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 I watched Disney films when I was a kid, you know, and yeah. I cried, I did Bambi and all that stuff, but the question is, I love Lion King. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm not a critic. I, I go to the movies conventionally, and if I enjoy, uh, generally speaking, the spectacle. Do you look back, do you savor uh, looking oh, yeah. back? How does it make you feel? Listen, there's nothing wrong with going back and, <laughs> and exercising that, that right we have, we lived a life and it was going so fast at some point. And once you get on the train in the movie business, that Midnight Express train rolls so fast, and you don't, you have no time. I mean, I made one film after another for whatever, 10 straight years and then I kept working. So it's really great to stop and appreciate it. Go back, remember these moments that in time become more interesting as you write about them we appreciate your life and you also discover your own consciousness better. It's a wonderful feeling. Oliver Stone, it's been a delight talking to you. You have had you, an John. extraordinary life and we have a little glimpse into it. So thank you very much for your time. My pleasure. Thank you, Mr. Steen. Very formal ending there. He has two, he has, apparently has two offices. In his well, house. I was very impressed. And he's got another one. He goes for different inspiration in either. I was very impressed with his office. Do you think he does go to watch films like, I don't know, X-Men or Marvel films? Well, as you heard, he says he has a very eclectic taste and he goes and just goes and see things. So, uh, yeah, he cried at Bambi, but he did caveat when I was a child. Uh, the memoir, which is fascinating, is called Chasing the Light. Uh, you're watching Breakfast. Lots coming up on the programme. We're talking about the railways in the north of England. They're receiving £600 million. Uh, we're going to ask how the money is going to be used and if it will be enough to resolve problems that have affected services in the past. We'll be discussing that shortly, bringing you the latest news and weather. Time now is 6.28. Good morning. The Prime Minister will stress his unwavering commitment to the Union on a visit to Scotland today, marking a year in office.